testing one two one two sound test the title of video is going to be negotiable instruments for discharge are not gifting securities I intend to debunk the myth that title 31 section 3113 gives the government or IRS or Treasury the right to discharge instruments when they want to I'm going to provide evidence to show how they are violating the law and that there has been discharges that have been successfully uh, offset years ago even in more recent times and they did change things down the road but first as usual before we get started I would like to give a disclaimer the opinions and views in this following video do not necessarily reflect the views of other individuals or organizations affiliated or not affiliated with the content creator the point of views and purpose of this video is not to bully or harass anybody, but rather share the opinion and thoughts with other like-minded individuals curious about the subject. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research as permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational personal use tips to balance in favor of fair use with that being said now let's get into this uh, I have the uh, different this law right here pulled up uh, as you can see in this section this is uh, title 31 of United States Code section 3113 this is from a Cornell law website as you can see in the title this deal specifically it mentions accepting gifts there's a reason why I also pulled this document up, uh, Gift of Securities, uh, right here on, on this page. It says, marketable sec securities, gifts of publicly traded securities that have appreciated in value allow you to claim a charitable uh, deduction for the full market value of the securities on date. Okay, now if I go back to the uh, page, it's uh, where I put the title of the video negotiable instruments for discharge are not gifting securities it's the reason why I titled this is the way I'm interpreting this uh, there was a particular uh, guru who's very knowledgeable out there I do respect uh, listen to his information but I think he's incorrect pertaining to this law specifically uh, is in relation to GSA bonds by the way and specifically as you can see from the screen capture video this law specifically mentions the administrator of general services in which I'm interpreting as is related to the GSA bonds which are different from promissory notes and other various types of negotiable instruments I have uh, a page pulled up that I plan on a little bit later in this video to go over the definition of a promissory note and show that there's a distinction from the uh, GSA bonds. This individual mentioned in the past that he utilized them to discharge his child support that he owed. I want to say to those, many of you all are already aware that are already knowledgeable about redemption education or uh, sovereignty, know that there's many different various processes, various procedures. Uh, speaking to many in the past, I uh, have mentioned that there was various ways that they felt from their observation to access the so-called secret account or TDA, whatever name people give it. I may touch on that uh, later, but this law specifically in Title 31 of the CFR uh, Section 596.307 Monetary Instruments. The reason I pulled this up, this law distinguishes the different types of monetary instruments on a side note. The reason why certain types of negotiable instruments are not being processed correctly because they were being mistaken for securities when they are not. This law properly compartmentalizes the difference in language between a negotiable instrument and investment security. It even goes as far as to say bearer form or otherwise such form that title thereto passes upon delivery. There's a distinction and this is important. Um, I'm going to go over uh, why, in my opinion, when people, for example, uh, send in negotiable instruments to uh, make payments, which uh, in the past, I do know for a fact, uh, from there was older technology of an uh, instrument that was used. It was uh, a bond, uh, by the way, just in general terms related to secure party creditor information. There was someone I had assisted many years ago. And I made sure we followed the instructions to the T 
and she sent it off registered mail. Well, some months later or some time after that, we had met up again. She had uh, some good news for me. She actually showed me where they removed the alleged debt from her credit report, by the way, uh, because I had taught her this type of information that I had learned about many years ago. We went to the same college together, by the way. I won't go into the details about who she is specifically, but this is a true story, and I've witnessed this uh, many years ago. I can't say uh, anyone else that I know that still utilizes that particular type of instrument, if that still works. But there is a, a uh, site I was able to pull up, or a, a document, by the way, uh, from the investigative journalist Barton Butes. Now, you guys may have been hearing me talk about this for a while. I was going through... Uh, a folder I have with a lot of files because when you've acquired numerous information over time you don't may not remember where something is at specifically but many years ago kudos to this investigative journalist Barton Butes he did a lot of research and also assisted writing the uh, crack in the cold book not the manual that uh, is the IRS version but one that was circulating around uh, the prisons etc